Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Time for our weekly fireside space heater side chat. I don't think you can actually see it, but there's a little radiator next to me. Uh, how are you? I hope that you've had a good week. I'm just gonna look really close here, extreme close up. Yes, the camera's rolling. Never quite sure when I started. Did I hit the right button? I don't know. What day is it? May 87th? I have no idea. March 87th? Oh, wow. Yeah, I haven't been anywhere this week except, uh, have I? I don't think so. Have I gone anywhere? I don't know. No, I don't, I don't think I did. I've walked, walked the dog a lot. We've walked in the woods, which is actually very nice. Um, the cross country trails down at the school because the school's not in session, obviously. Um, and, um, yeah, just pretty much sticking close to home, keeping myself busy. I have a new hobby. I talked about it last week a little bit and it is sourdough baking. And today I just took out of the oven the best loaf I have ever made, and I, I actually brought it down here so I could show you. Um, I, I'm just, I'm just really excited. I think it's fun to to learn new things, especially when you're in a situation. Look at that! Oh, isn't it gorgeous? I cannot wait to slice into it. Um, especially when you're in a situation where. Uh, you're, you know, you've got a lot of time on your hands. You may feel a little anxious because you don't feel like you can do anything. Um, great time to start a new hobby or to expand into something you've been interested in. I've been baking bread for years, um, but I've, I've wanted to do sourdough for like the last six months or so, but it just, every time I, I like read about doing the starter, it just seems like a big ordeal and there seems like a lot of ways to screw up. But I found a recipe on this blog called Kitchen and I'll link it down below because it was so simple. For one thing, I didn't, I, I would see all these sourdough starter recipes and you'd need like flour that I don't have, like something I have to go to the natural food store for, um, not just something I have in my pantry, or it would uh, it would just be a long process and a very specific, you had to do certain things at certain times, and it just seemed like so many opportunities for error and wasting everything. And I also didn't like the fact that you had to discard all the time. So I found this recipe for a sourdough star starter that used all-purpose flour and um, and you just added to it four ounces of water, four ounces of flour every day for five days, bam, you get a starter. And on day three, because day two, I'm like, I'm making paste. This, there's no way this is going to work. Day three, I had bubbles. It had lifted and fallen. And it yeah, just kept getting sour smelling. It just smelled sour. It smelled right. And I made a loaf on day five, and it was decent. I made uh, two loaves on day six. So, I mean, I was feeding it and, like, taking out, but I was using the... It wasn't really discarded. I was using it from it. It was supposed to supposedly ripe and stuff. And um, I've just been using it. This, these are these would be loaves five and six I made today. Um, is that right? I did one loaf, and then I did two loaves. Yeah, five, five and six. These would be loaves five and six, I think. So I did one on one day, then I did two... And then these would be two. Yeah, five and six. Um, and today's loaves came out great. I also did one in the loaf pan. But anyway, I'm at that wonderful stage in learning something new where you don't know how much you don't know yet. And that's where I am. So like the, I'm at this, at that wonderful stage, that fertile stage of learning something new where you're making huge steps forward all the time. That's why I think it's so important to try new things because once you've been like painting or you've been doing something for a couple of years, you plateau. And then you're like, why can't I push forward? I don't, I just feel like I'm staying at the same level and it can get very discouraging. You might even feel like you've fallen back, like you've taken a few steps back in what you're learning and it's very discouraging. So trying something new, you get that beginner stage. I think the beginner phase and things is so wonderful. It's kind of like the newlywed phase in a relationship. You are constantly growing and learning. Like the problem that I had with my second loaf, I was doing like an artisanal style, kind of like I just showed you there but it didn't rise up really. It kind of spread out. It didn't, I tried slashing it, but it ended up deflating it because I was using a serrated knife, which is what the blog recommended or recommended this other thing, which I didn't know what it was, but it turns out it's like a razor blade. That's what I used this time. And that's why I got those pretty little slices. Um, I didn't, and I didn't know about like, I didn't know why you put it in the oven hotter for 10 minutes and covered it. I didn't like, I didn't know why you did certain things. And a lot of times if I don't know why you're doing it, then I'll skip it. I'm like, ah, that's probably not important. I didn't know letting the bread rest after you divided it was important. It's so important because the dough is so sticky. You can't really handle it very well if you don't let it rise and the dough doesn't get that strength and that tension that you need. So, you know, you're just learning so much when you start something new that, um, 
that it's it's exciting and you know you don't know what you don't know yet you practice i'm practically an expert i've made five loaves you know that's how you feel when you're when you're learning something new and it's just a wonderful wonderful feeling so i encourage you to try something new maybe it's painting maybe it's card making maybe it's um using a different media like markers or uh watercolors or acrylics or oils you know just try something new if you're stuck at home especially if you're stuck at home um you know waiting for your job to start back up and you've got some time. It's not an expensive, bread making is not an expensive hobby. Uh, there's a lot of things that aren't very expensive, especially if you have the supplies at home already. You probably have some supplies because you're watching my channel and I know you're not just watching it for the chatty, witty conversation. <laughs> I assume you're watching it for some craft and art techniques. Um, so you've probably got some supplies you bought and paid for and uh, yeah, put them to use, learn something new. Um, there's so many resources online for free, which is just wonderful. There's classes too. There's, you know, very affordable ways to learn and, uh, yeah, trying something new. It's a very good thing. Um, so I'm having success with my sourdough starter that I started just a little over a week ago. Was it last week when we did our chat that I was talking about I just started a starter? Well, uh, so we're seeing the fruits of the labor now. Um, I'm, I really like that. I, it was a very fast starter. It does have that, that's, it's probably going to taste more sour as we go along. It's slightly sour. The dough tastes slightly sour. It's got that nice chewy texture, but it's not as, um, and it's enough to kind of lift the bread. Um, but it's not like, it's not really super tangy. The recipe, the basic sandwich loaf is what I used um, from the kitchen. I decided I would use the same recipe just because I know they made it with that starter. It does require a little bit of yeast, not a lot, like a um, one and a half teaspoons for two good sized loaves. Um, but then I think as the starter gets more mature, I actually, probably the next ones I try, I won't even use yeast. I'll see if there's enough leavening in the, uh, in the dough. I think there will be. Um, so yeah, that's my excitement. That's my new thing that I'm learning. And uh, it's really does a good job at keeping the crazy away every day. I am somebody that gets kind of anxious. I can't really sit still. I thought I'm gonna have all this time to read because my workload is pretty light. Um, but I've sat down to read several times. I just can't focus. So having things hands on things like this, to work on, like my scrap paper cards that we did a couple weeks ago, things like that that's puttery that I can keep coming back to that only take like bursts of attention are perfect for me when I'm in this kind of anxious state of mind where I feel like, like I just gotta keep swimming like that, like a shark, you know, just gotta keep swimming. Otherwise, if I sit down and I'm still, I'll kind of get a little anxious and freaked out. So, so yeah, I'm using my anxiety <laughs> as, a, as a benefit. Oh, uh, so last week I mentioned, what have I used up? I used up, uh, or my daughter's used up clasps and chains. And a lovely viewer, Dineen, she sent me this beautiful card, by the way. Isn't that, oh, that's my stick that I put my camera on. Uh, this beautiful card, a lovely letter inside. And um, she said, well, I, I used to make jewelry a lot for business. I have a bunch of leftovers. Would you like them? And um, I said, well, since the stores, I usually don't accept um, gifts from readers, just uh, from viewers, because I don't want to take advantage of anybody. I don't want anyone to feel like they have to. That's why I don't publish an address or anything. Um, I said, well, since the stores are closed, if you've got some spare chains and clasps and that you're not going to use, that would be wonderful. And then a couple days later, I hear this thud, this like heavy thud on the porch. And I'm like, huh, I did have, I was expecting some, um, some supplies from a client for a freelance project. So that's what I thought it was. So I went out and I got it. I'm like, this is a big box. And I open it up and it is chock a block full of gorgeous jewelry making supplies. Holy moly, she sent me a beautiful letter um, on how it helped her declutter her studio. And um, I just want to say thank you. That was so above and beyond. I was expecting a little envelope with some clasps and chain, which I would have been so grateful for. And this was just like, um, you would have thought it was Christmas morning. It was like, holy moly, the girls are so excited to make some jewelry with these beautiful supplies. So thank you very much. I do appreciate that. Um, and uh, it was very, very good because all the stores are closed still. Um, oh, another thing I want to update you with. So I got some really great advice from you guys about how, what I should do with my brushes. So I, um, I, yesterday, I, cause I wanted to do something before I talked with you guys again. So yesterday, I love the ideas that I was getting from you guys about using a tray or using a couple trays or something like that for corralling brushes. And I'm like, well, that just makes so much sense because if I had a tray for each media, I could just take the tray out if I wanted to have all my brushes or it'd just be really easy to identify. Um, I had one tray that was a good size um, and it was actually, I 
I, I love trays, but I notice if I use them for storage, like around the house, like if I have a tray in the bathroom or a tray, like on, on the coffee table or in a, on the kitchen table or anything like that, even if it's full of decorative things, it just turns into a clutter catcher. But since I'm the only one down here that uses a space, I know that's not gonna happen. So I'm gonna spin the camera around and show you what I did with my brush storage here. Let me, hopefully it's not too dark. Oh, I don't think it is. I think you can see that all right. Um, so I took a tray, ooh, got my sweater caught on something, um, this one right here, which is a really big one, I, I had bought it for my kitchen, my, no, my, uh, coffee table, but it was just too big, it caught too much stuff, but this is perfect for all, for those, um, those delicate vases and mugs that I was worried about breaking, and I can pull it out if I need to, but actually I can pretty much get to everything, and then, um, I have my oil painting brushes in this space, my short handled oil painting brushes. So like if I'm sitting and I don't want to have my long handled ones, I put labels on all my things of acrylic and I, t I found this big um, can. I, you guys might be using these um, things that come in big cans like that. I think they're called like number 10 or number eight cans. Uh, you can get like long-term food storage in them, but I go, we go through a lot of peanut butter powder because it's like fat free. I love to add it in my oatmeal every morning. Um, the kids add it in their smoothies and it comes in, well, I buy it, we buy it in these big cans on Amazon when they go on sale. Sometimes they're like 40 bucks, but they will drop in price to like 12 something and that's when I grab them. Um, so we just emptied one and I thought, well, that's perfect because I had these in a bunch of like tall tapered coffee mugs that had fall, you know, they'd fallen in the past and the handles had broken off. So that's why I was using them for brushes, but they're very tipsy. So this is perfect. I can have all my long handled acrylic brushes in there and I labeled it. So if the kids need acrylic brushes, they can grab those. The kids actually have a bucket of acrylic brushes, short handled acrylic brushes upstairs right now. So I have a lot of acrylic brushes for someone who doesn't use acrylics all that often. Um, but I want to label those because the kids pretty much just use acrylics. And if they were using watercolor, they still know they can use their acrylic brushes and they don't use oils. So um, they could if they wanted to. I don't, I don't mind them, but they would need a little supervision because they've never learned how to use oils before. So that's my solution for now. Back here, I've got chalk painting brushes and some large ink sweeper brushes that I don't really use because I have color dusters and stuff, but they're, they're kind of handy and I might use them for murals or something in future. And they're not really taking up that much space And they're in a box that I painted that I like. So I'm going to keep the box. So I might as well keep the stuff in it. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's my story anyway. Um, let's see, what else do I have on my little notes? Hello again. <laughs> uh, oh, yes, something else I wanted to share because we're all, you know, we're all at home and we might not have the money to spend on templates. We might not have, you know, we're not waltzing out to the store every time we need something. So um, something that I wanted to mention is something I've been doing for years and years, a long time since before I even had kids. Um, and that is saving boxes. So my husband's birthday was last week and I got him some chocolates. It came in this really neat box. And after the chocolates were gone, the kids helped him with it. <laughs> they, uh, he said, Hey, do you want this box for anything? Cause he knows that I'm always saving weird stuff. And like, it's really cute. And I thought, you know, you could alter this box. So it's shorter to hold like a cupcake. You could like put a sleeve of cookies in here. Like if you were baking cookies for like a neighbor. Um, and you know, this time it's not like you can run out. If your best friend has a birthday, you can't run out and just go buy a present. Um, you know, you might be able to order something online, but you might not be able to find what you want. It might not come in time. A lot of people like consumables because, you know, they don't want clutter. Well, you bake like, some gorgeous cookies or, you know, a cupcake or something. You put it in a little box that you made. So what I do when I find, when I get a cute box or somebody has, you know, used something and it came in cute packaging, rather than throwing away the packaging, I try to collapse it down. If it collapses down well, chances are it's going to be really easy to recreate. Um, when I'm ready to use it, I'll take it apart at the seam. And then I keep it in this big, um, um, this big binder. Now this is a crop and style paper sticker binder. You might have this from back in the day. I don't think this company is in business anymore, but um, they made fantastic storage products for, uh, for scrapbookers. And it's got these really deep pockets. Like when I, when I find something, um, I like it's anything that's temper template related or a thin book that's got a lot of templates in it. I will put it in here. If it's like a heavy, a thicker book, like that will go on the shelf, I would put it on the shelf, but something like this, like I loved this. Um, do you remember design originals? They, they had that Panda bear as their logo. Oh, you can see it better on the back. They had such cute little booklets and this one was all about using eyelets. And I just, I love that style of art. It's kind of from like, I'd say the early 20, um, 2000s, late 90s, early 2000s stamping projects. And 
as you know, I have a huge stash of brads and eyelets, and this this book was all about them. I'll see if I can find it. Amazon may have a copy. I have no idea. I'm sure it's out of print. But I just loved the ideas in here. And when I'm stumped um, for an idea for a project, I'll flip through here and see if something like jogs my memory. And so like I have a little template of a um, of a paper doll. I cut out of acetate. I keep that in there because it's really fun to do with the eyelets. Um, there's little pockets on the side. Uh, if I scrapbook, I love doing color blocking. So I have a bunch of little color blocking templates. Uh, when I print something off the internet, like I was doing some iris folding a few years ago, I was making some Christmas cards, and I found some nice templates online, and they worked out really well, so I just printed them, well, I had printed them off to use them, so rather than chuck them and then hope I can find them again on the internet, I just saved them. I made little color co color notes, um, I wrote, I had different sizes here, um, I, if I needed to write a note to remember something, I would do that right on there. And they don't have to be pretty, but they're they're functional. That way, if I need to make a quick card or the internet's down, I can like just grab this and I can make stuff. French fry boxes. I love French fry boxes, so I like saved this one because it was pretty clean. And I'll just trace it and um, and make it. And it's so much easier than trying to find um, trying to find a pattern online or to haul up my die cutter, load up paper, because a lot of times the paper's bigger for these boxes, so I can like just trace this on a piece of poster board or something. I have this little almond, I've used this once because I've already taken it apart, little almond pouch, tea boxes, anything like that, it's so handy. Or if you like, used to be, if you go to like a, a craft store, they would have these big AccuCut machines, like these big die cutters, because very few people own die cutters. And you could buy, like, you could buy a box. Well, this is a good one. This is like a french fry basket. So what I would do is you'd usually buy the paper at these stores, and then they would cut it for you. Um, I had this extra, like, a, some extra things made. I just cut out a black that I would save as templates. This is a little french fry box that I could trace and cut, and then I could fill it with candies or, um, like, handmade soap or, you know some jewelry, whatever, you know, whatever I want to give to somebody. I have a little box for it. So, you know, you're in quarantine, you might not have all of, you know, the resources available to you, but you have a lot of resources available to you. You just need to um, be aware of them. So save things. If you've printed out a pattern and you love it, it worked really well, make notes on it, save it for the next time you need it. There's no point in like, you know, cutting it out five or six times or printing it out five or six times. I'm stitching things. Oh, this one's cool. Jackson. Um, oh no, this one's actually Lila's. Um, in school, I think they've all did, done this in, um, in sixth grade, they had their art teacher had them do pop-ups and they made this little book and I was like, that is such a great resource. So it shows you how to cut, how to cut your paper, how to fold it and cut it, and then it's got the example of what it looks like. So I was like, oh, can I have that? Because there's like so many examples in here. That's better than any die set you can buy. Um, I gotta remember to use that. Uh, so I thought it was really fun. I keep envelope templates in here, um, all sorts of things, card templates, anything that I don't think I would be able to remember how to make or even think of making again. So that's, that's a nice tip. If you make, a lot of times you might make your own template to make a special card for somebody, save it, put it in your binder. You could use an office supply store binder. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Um, you could even use a shoebox, you know, however, however you want to organize it is fine. But I thought that was a really fun tip because anybody can do it. It's basically doesn't cost you anything if you have a binder and it's really useful. It's a great time. Like, I, I don't know about you, but this quarantine, I've kind of like, Sometimes it's like, I just want to create something. I just want to make, but I can't think of what I want to do. And so I've been doing kind of puttery things like doing color pencil stuff and, um, you know, reviewing color pencils, just kind of puttery things that take a long time because it, getting started, it seems to be like the most difficult thing for me right now. It's like once I'm on the, once I'm like working on something, it's fine, but just kind of getting started. Um, so I'll do kind of do a big batch of something and just kind of put her away at it. Like I did brush backgrounds. That video just came out. I have some marbling projects coming out uh, probably yesterday at the time when this video comes out. Um, so, you know, I think it's just, a, I think it's nice to, to kind of have some puttery projects and, uh, gathering up a bunch of templates can be a puttery project. Um, and also using them cause I can flip through here and then I'll find something that'll, that'll strike my imagination and then I'll be able to craft from that. So. I don't know, it's kind of like the same idea. I know a lot of people, 
used to, like if you get a magazine subscription, a craft or a scrapbook magazine, you rather than keeping all the magazines, you might go tear out the um, projects that you're actually likely to do and put them in a binder. That's another thing you can do. That's another great resource because you can make your own, you know, custom book of, you know, card making ideas that way. And it just, for me, like I can pin something on Pinterest or bookmark something on my computer, but I'm very unlikely to go back and look it up again. But if it's something physical like that, then it will catch my eye in my studio and then I'll be like, hmm, I haven't looked in there for a while and I'll haul it down and, and start flipping through. So a eh, little idea for you. Anyway, um, I hope you found that useful. I'm looking at my list of things that I jotted down to maybe chit chat about. That's what I think about. Actually, I think about that on my walks with the dog. I will, um, I'll be walking and I'll usually listen to a podcast and then I'll, you know, I'll think of little topics that I, might be interesting or inspiring to chat with you on Saturday about, and I'll write them down, and sometimes I use them, sometimes I don't, but um, hopefully it just kind of gives you something to think about. I feel like it's, you know, I love these Saturday chats, and I love hearing what you guys have to say, but it, sometimes it feels like, man, I haven't done anything all week. What am I going to talk about? I haven't been anywhere. Uh, I went last, although I'm thinking I went somewhere and I can't remember where. But it's like I haven't done anything. I'm like I have like quarantine amnesia. I got quarantine brain. Um, I, I had an adventure last weekend. I had to go uh, return some Chinese food because I got the wrong order. Uh, that wasn't very fun because <laughs> it was all the way in Bangor, which is like half an hour away. Um, yeah, no, I haven't had any real. Oh, yes. How did I forget this? I did go see my mother on Mother's Day. Um, so thank you guys so much for weighing in on whether it would be safe or not to do so. Most of you guys said it would be perfectly safe. Um, the, the the biggest risk would be me picking up something from her since she's been working every day. They own a hardware store, lumberyard, essential business. Um, it was lovely. We went down there and visited. I brought some plants, went to the nursery and bought some flowers. I don't know anything about plants. That should probably be my uh, my new hobby, but I do not enjoy digging in the dirt and doing all that stuff. And I don't enjoy being outside unless it's like really hot out. So um, yeah, I digging around in the dirt, 50 degree weather does not uh, does not spark joy. But um, but my mother loves to garden. My sister loves to garden. So I grabbed some plants for them. And it's funny, my sister gave me a, a geranium. <laughs> she gives me the very low maintenance plants. <laughs> um, so it was nice to see mom, dad, and Bri. And uh, it was a good little visit. Um, so yeah, we did do that. We did, that was, that was great. I'm so glad we did that. Um, and of course, if you follow my blog, I'm sure that you already knew that, <laughs> but, um, yeah, check out my, uh, if you're looking for some projects to keep you busy. Um, I have thousands of videos on my YouTube channel, including some videos for kids. Although I don't know if you can even find them that will, how YouTube changed everything about kids, but I think I still have a kid's playlist where you could find all the kids crafts. If you're looking for stuff to do with them. Um, yeah start something, try something that I think the best way to learn is just to jump in and do it. I am the type of person that if I research something, are we about to run out of time here? Oh, we got a couple minutes. Um, I'm the type of person that if I research something too much and I'm just like, nope, not going to do it. Like, then that's why I think it took me so long to try making sourdough bread because like every time I'd read it, everybody has an opinion and everyone's like, that won't work. All purpose flour, you can't use all purpose flour. You got to go get this artisanal, artisanal flour that was grown in the Serengeti for the purpose of sourdough bread making that was passed down the, the you know, the, but for through generations of artisans and you must buy that flour and you must do this and you must do that. And it was just like, oh my word, that is way over my head. I am not that experienced of a domestic goddess to be able to pull that off. But when I found that simple recipe, I'm like, I'm just going to try this. Either it works or it doesn't. Um, you don't know what you don't know until you try. And uh, I think that that's the best way to go about most things. My father said, you want to learn how to build a house? Build a house. You know, the best way to learn it is just by doing it. Same thing with painting, same thing with crafting. Just jump in, try what's the worst that's going to happen. Well, building a house, I don't think I would jump in and build a house. But, you know, the worst thing that's going to happen, maybe you waste a couple pieces of paper, maybe you waste a little paint, but you're going to learn and the education that you've got, I mean, we all know education's expensive, right? The education that you've got from that is going to be worth well more than whatever you waste and paint, paper, or flour, for that matter. So um, learn something new. It's good for your brain. Keeps your brain sharp. And we all need that when we're self-isolating and, you know, not getting out and seeing people and having our brain stimulated <laughs> other ways, I think. Um, well, that was random and rambly. I hope you enjoyed it. I want to thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting!